Okay, so this is the higher level applied maths sample paper for 2022-2023, question 2. So in this question we have a diagram and it shows the scheduling network for a project to manufacture a new chemical compound. The network provides some information about the relationship between the 12 activities that have to be completed as part of the project. The edges of the network represent these activities and are labelled with the letters A to L. The unlabeled edges shown in, uh, with uh, dashed lines do not represent real activities, but they help explain the order in which the activities must happen. The letters used to label the edges should not be taken as representing the order in which the activities happen. The nodes of the network represent events or points in time during the project, and uh, the source node is the time when the project begins and the sync node is the time when the project ends. So this is our diagram here and what we have to do now is complete the table on the next page or below here by listing for each activity the other activities on which it depends directly. That is for each activity x an element of C2L write the smallest uh, possible list of activities which need to be completed before activity x can begin. Activities A and B do not depend on any prior activities, so the list is empty for these activities as shown. Use the space below to show the relevant supporting work if necessary. Okay, so we can see here we've got activity A directly depends on nothing. Same with B. So we've got to look at C first. So if we look at C here, C is just simply going to depend on A and nothing else. So we can write in A here. D then, D depends on, let's see where is D, D is down here, so D depends directly on B. E is here, E depends directly on A, nothing else, so E depends on A. F is the next one that depends on just B. So F is here, it just depends on B being completed. So we put B here, so we've got A, B, A, B so far. Now G then, G depends on F being completed only. So we put F here. And let's look at H then. H is here. Now H depends on C being completed. Uh, it also, because we have this dotted line here, it also depends on E being completed. Z is going, if you like, that way. And uh, also because we have a dotted line down along here, it's also really going to depend on F being completed as well. So we're looking at H depending on C, E and F. C, E, and F. Okay, I is next, so I is dependent on E, anyway, and also because we have the started line down along here, it's going to be dependent on F as well. F has to be completed as well, so I is dependent on E and F. Okay, J then is dependent on, so we have J here. J is going to be dependent on F because of this uh, dummy activity here, and also D. So J is dependent on D and F. K then is the next one, so we have K here. K is going to be dependent on J anyway, and also G. So K is dependent on G and J. And finally then L. L then here is going to be dependent on, it's going to be dependent on H anyway, and I. It's going to be dependent on because we have this dummy activity here, it's going to be dependent on G and J. So L is dependent on H, I, G and J. H, I, G and J. Okay, so that's the first part completed then. 
next part then says, let's see, for each of the statements in part two and three below, state whether you agree or disagree with the statement. Use the scheduling network and or your answers to part one uh, to justify your answer in each case. So let's see, we have activity D and it must be completed before activity G. So activity D must be completed before G. Let's have a look. Activity D is here. That must be completed before activity G. Well, that's not the case because, let's see, we have G is only dependent really on F here. This arrow is pointing the wrong way anyway for it to be dependent on D. So we need to disagree with this statement. So let's write that out. So I would disagree since G depends on F and F depends on B. So that would be enough there. It only depends, G only depends on F, in other words. So activity E must be completed before activity H. Activity E must be completed before H. Let's have a look. So activity E must be completed before activity H. Well, that's correct because this arrow is going in this direction. This is our dummy activity here. So E must be completed before H. So in this case, I'm going to agree. Let's write that out. So I would agree since H depends on C, E, and F. Uh, you can write a bit more if you like. There is a dummy activity. There is a dummy activity between H and E. showing that H depends on E. Being completed, if you like. Okay, so that's uh, that question finished. Let's move on to the next one then. So the time in days to complete each of the activities A to L is given in the table below and has also been included in the network uh, redrawn on this page. Okay, so we have a table and we have our network underneath it. Calculate the early time and late time for each event. Okay, so complete the diagram below by writing the early time in the upper box and the late time in the lower box at the node representing each event. Okay, so let's just work through that. So first of all, we have A taking five days. Well, we can see them all here anyway. So our, we're gonna start here anyway with zero, zero at the very beginning here at our source node. Um, A takes five days, so it's, we're gonna put five here and B takes three days, so it's gonna be three here. Okay, so next then we are going from, let's say we'll go over in this direction here. So C takes six days, so the early time there is gonna be six, or it can be, well, we'll go down along here first, actually. If we go down to E first, towards E, we've got five and four here, which is gonna give us nine. And actually, I'll come across here to F as well. We've got three plus two here, which is gonna give us five. And now we're gonna look at C. So let's have a look at C. We are going to look at 5 plus 6, which is 11. So that's these two here, 5 plus 6, which is 11. So we have a choice between 11 and we have 9 here as well. 
9 as well. So we've got to pick the larger of the two. So we're going to put in 11 here. Okay, and down here then, we've actually got, uh, let's see, 3 plus 2, which is 5. And actually what I should have done here was I had a choice here between 5 and 9. So I picked a larger one here, which was 9. Okay, so let's move on then to the next one. Let's move down to this one here. So we have 9 plus 3, which is 12. So I've got a choice between 12 and down along here I've got 5. So I've got a choice between 12 and 5. Pick the, pick the larger one, which is 12. So I'm picking 12 here. Let's look at this one here now. Uh, let's see, we've got 5 plus 8. So that's going to give me 13. And then we've got 12 plus 2, which will give me 14. So I'm going to pick the larger one, which is 14. So I'm going to put 14 here. Let's look at this one. So here, let's see what have we got here. We've got 11 plus 4, which is 15. And along here, then, we've got 9 plus 11, which is 20. The larger one there is 20, so I'm going to pick that one. And then finally, oh, I had uh, actually I had 14 here as well, but uh, 20 is the larger anyway. So let's have a look here. Out at the end, we've got uh, 20 plus 5, which is 25. We've got 14 plus 7, which is 21. So I'm going to pick the larger one, which is 25. So that would be 25 here and 25 here. Okay, so now we've got to work backwards to work out the uh, late times. So let's start here with um, this one here. So we're going to take 25 minus 5, which is 20. Uh, down along here, we've got 25 minus 7, which is 18. So let's put 18 here. Okay, so here we're going to pick uh, 25 minus 5, which is 20. Let's move up to here now. So we've got, uh, let's see, we've got 20 minus 4, which is 16. Well, that's really about it. Uh, so we're going to put 16 here. Here we've got, let's see, we've got 20 minus 11, which is 9. So we're going to put 9 here. Here, out here, then we have, well, we're going to come down here first, let's say 18 minus 2, which is 16. So we're going to put 16 here. Now up here then, we're going to put 16 or, so we've got a choice here really, we've got 16 from here, or we've got 18 minus 8, which is 10. So we've got a choice of 16 or 10, but we've also got this 9 here as well. So we have a choice of 16, uh, 10 or 9. So we're going to pick the lowest one, which is 9. Okay, so let's move to this one here, I think. So we have a choice here again, I think 16 uh, minus 9, which is 7. And we have 9 minus 2 here as well, which is 7. So we're going to put 7 here. Up here then we have a choice as well. I think we've got 16 minus 6, which is 10. And we've got 9 minus 4 which is 5, so we're going to pick the lower one, which is 5. So we're going to put 5 here, and that will bring us back to the start then. So that's that particular diagram finished. Okay, so the next part of this question is where we have to write down a critical path, or the critical path for the network. So we can see the critical path is here, so it's going to be here, 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 and here. These are the nodes where the early and late times are the same. So that's our critical path then. So we're going to be looking at A, E, I, and L. So let's write that down. So our critical path is A, E, I, and L. Write down the minimum time in days needed to complete this project. Well, the minimum time in days is just going to be 25 days. And then it says select any one non-critical activity on the network and calculate its float in days. Okay, so I think what we'll do is take this one here. So I'm going to take D, it's non-critical. And if you look at D then you've got um, the 
early time is three. It takes nine days. So that's uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 days in total. And the latest that the, it can be finished is 16 days. So that would leave a float of four. Or you can just take, uh, let's say, well, I put down D first anyway. We're looking at D. So we're looking at 16 minus 9 minus 3, which is equal to 4 days. OK, so the last part of this question just says, let's see, the project is due to begin on the morning of July the 1st. Uh, the key worker needed to carry out activity G will be away on holidays when the project begins. What is the latest date on which this worker could return to work without necessarily causing the project to be delayed? Justify your answer. Okay, so I just put a little um, July 2022 calendar here. Uh, my answer here is going to be Ju July the 11th. So here. So let's see why that might be. So my answer is is July the 11th. So July the 11th is where we're going to start. If we look at our network up here, we can see that we have to complete G and then K. So G takes eight days and K is going to take seven days. So let's have a look at that. So G takes eight days. bringing us up to. So if we have a look at that, July the 11th is here. So we're starting on the morning. So we're going, we must put in morning here as well, by the way. So we're going to include July the 11th. So we need eight days. So it's going to be just going to be one day here, two days, three days, four days, five days, six days, seven days, eight days brings us into the morning of the 19th. July 19th. Okay, so now we need to look at the next one, which was um, K, which takes seven days. So K takes seven days. So let's have a look at that. So we're going to include the 19th. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, including the 25th up to the end of July 25th. So my answer, therefore, is July 11th in the morning. OK, so that's it for this question.